Leveling up. Extreme business growth through raising your game. When what was once extraordinary becomes ordinary, you know you've leveled up. Hello and welcome to the Leveling Up podcast with me, George Swift. The Leveling Up podcast is here to give you the personal development, the entrepreneurial development and the business growth that you, the ambitious business owner, desires. I'm here to give you the inspiration, the motivation, but above all else, to challenge your aspirations to take you and your business to the next level. Don't forget, subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. And in today's episode, we are talking about money and very specifically three areas of money that you need to have in place in order to make your business financially successful, in order for you yourself to be financially successful. We'll talk about each of these in turn, but we are talking about money mindset, money modeling and money methodologies. So let's get stuck in straight away, straight off the bat money mindset. I always say this, mindset comes first. If I gave you the perfect business model, if I gave you the perfect plan, the perfect strategy, the perfect how-to, if your mindset's not in the right place, you're never going to execute against that strategy, against that plan. The analogy I always share is that of a personal trainer. And a personal trainer will tell you what to do. You'll go and say, right, I want to develop this kind of body, this kind of health, this kind of fitness. And they'll devise a plan for you. You Go to a nutritionist and say, I want to lose this kind of amount of weight, or I want to build up to this kind of physical shape, or I want to perform better, be healthier, whatever it might be. And they'll give you the plan to follow. And you know what? Most people never follow the plan. The bottom line is really simple because unless you're bought into the plan, unless you're already in the right place to fully execute against that plan, against that strategy, against those methodologies, the bottom line is really simple. You're just not going to do what you need to do in order to get what it is that you want to get. A big part of what we do at Bigger, Brighter, Bolder at my BBB success groups for ambitious entrepreneurs and for my extreme growth masterminds for my businesses that are doing over six figures and want to double year on year is actually getting them to do what it is they need to do in order to get the result that they want. We help them first and foremost. What is it you really want to get? You set those goals. You set that vision. Then we help them to set the strategy and set the plan. But actually, the day-to-day aspects of our business, of our club, are really holding people accountable, challenging them, keeping them on track, keeping them inspired, keeping them motivated, continually sharing ideas with them, but also for them to share ideas with each other. The bottom line is to stay to their plans. And when the plans maybe run out of ideas or when the plan starts to not necessarily deliver on the result, it's about being able to adapt those plans or adapt those strategies so that ultimately we all achieve the goals that we want to get out of business and out of life. But I'm telling you now, like 70 to 80% of everything we do at Bigger, Brighter, Bolder, at Success Groups and Extreme Growth Masterminds is mindset, it's personal performance, it's human psychology, entrepreneurial psychology, it's getting under the bonnet of what makes us tick as the business owner so that we are no longer the limiting factor in our business. So I always start with mindset, whatever it is, whether we're talking about your marketing, your sales, whether we're talking about hiring staff, your leadership skills, whether we're talking about scaling your business, maybe even licensing, franchising, whatever it might be, we come at it with like 70, 80% of the mindset and the psychology first, because if you are not firing on all cylinders in life generally, in business generally, but also specifically within the areas you're trying to change or you're trying to improve, you are going to be fighting yourself every step of the way. It's the equivalent of hiring a personal trainer, hiring a nutritionist, everyone spending a lot of time devising what it is you need to do only for you to consistently frustrate yourself by actually not doing it. So when we're looking at money, we're looking at making money, we're looking at being profitable, we're looking at financial freedom, we're looking at scaling a business, we need to be financially successful in business. There's no other way about it. You know, I meet a lot of business owners that do struggle with this, especially like really small business owners, because They don't necessarily set up their businesses to be financially successful. They need a certain amount of money to live. And, you know, a lot of them, they're thinking about trying to replace their salary, but they're not really thinking bigger than that. And what happens is, is their own limitations 
around putting money first in business or any limitations about making money an important factor of business or even making it the priority of business is that they end up fighting themselves every single step of the way. And if your money mindset isn't in the right place, you're going to struggle to charge your worth. You're going to struggle to increase your prices. You're going to struggle to make good profit. You're going to struggle to make good money for yourself. And of course, all these things simply mean that you're not going to have the financial resources that you need in order to put back into the business so that your business can go out and do more of what it is that you set your business up for. I have a saying, which is regardless of whether money is the product of doing business or it's the byproduct of doing business, it must be the focus of your business. In other words, if you're there flipping houses, flipping cars, if you're in stock markets, for example, the money is the product of the business. You know, your, your whole business is set around a model of making money. And of course, if you don't have a good money mindset, you're never going to be successful at those businesses. However, more often than not, those businesses struggle less with mindset around money than, say, a service-based industry or a business that was set up specifically with the aims and objectives of supporting other people, helping other people, maybe healing other people. I tend to find those entrepreneurs, those business owners really struggle. In that case, Money is a byproduct of you doing what you do. In other words, you know, if I flip a house, I'm there flipping a house. It's like, you know, I buy the house for 100 grand. I flip it for 200 grand. You know, I make 50 grand profit after you take all the costs out of doing the house up, renovations, etc. It's all focused on the money. But when you look at a service-based business, you know, you might be a monsieur, you might be a therapist, you might be an accountant, you know, very often, you know, money goes down the list of priorities. You're thinking about giving a good service, helping people, supporting people, giving people a great experience, and money just keeps getting pushed down further and further and further down those lists of priorities. However, you know, money is the byproduct of what it is that you're doing. So in other words, you give good service, you give good customer experience, you get a great result for your customers, you get paid for it. And when I say it like that, It sounds like, you know, customer services should be a priority and getting results should be your priority. And therefore money, because it's a byproduct of those things, comes afterwards. Well, yes, in the business model, it comes afterwards. However, as the saying goes, regardless of whether money is the product of your business or a byproduct of you doing business, it needs to be the focus of your business. You still need to make sure you get the money right. Now, I've done many podcasts on money. So go back and check them all out if you resonate with the fact that you might have some limitations in yourself holding you back from making the money that you could otherwise. We're talking about anything from guilt, deserving, expectations, judgment, the, you know, the fear of what is too much, being, you know, being greedy, all these things, okay, they get in the way. Also, people that feel they're no good with maths or no good with numbers or no good with money or people that feel that you know, I'm not here to make money for myself. I'm here to serve other people. All of these these, these very admirable traits potentially sometimes actually get in the way of you being successful. And the bottom line is this, I don't really care if you want a six bedroom house, two Mercedes on the drive and your four holidays a year. That's not what's important to me. What's important to me is that as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, you get to create the life you want, whatever that looks like, but you also get to fulfill the potential that you have as an entrepreneur, but also that your business has. And if you are a service-based business and you set up your business deliberately to serve and to help and support other people, the more financially viable your business is, the more financially successful your business is, then the more you're going to be able to go out and facilitate the change, facilitate the impact that you want to have as a business and as an individual behind that business. So regardless of whether money is the product of your business or it's the byproduct of you doing business, it needs to be the focus of business. And if you've got any hangups around money and if you've got any self-imposed limitations around money, then you need to get on that. You need to break through those because even if we get the next two parts right in your business, you are going to be the limiting factor in your business's ability to be as financially successful and therefore 
its ability to go out and do what it was designed to do. And you want to make sure that you get out of your business's way. So just literally check in with yourself. Do you need to do some work on this? Are there some self-imposed limitations that you have around money? Are you aware that you have a money mindset or even a scarcity mindset around money? Are you aware that, you know, even what you consider to be a lot of money? See, if someone thinks that 50 grand is a lot of money, then it's unlikely they're going to make 100 grand in their business because the mere fact that 50 grand is a lot means that 100 grand is a shed load and therefore potentially either outside of their own expectations, outside of their deserving, or actually potentially it's just outside what they believe is feasible. Equally, if someone thinks that a million pounds is not a lot of money, then don't be surprised that they don't get in the way and hold their business back from hitting that million pound mark. There may be other factors, the next two that we're going to be talking about, for example, that may get in the way and limit their business from hitting a million, but they're unlikely to be the one that gets in the way because the fact is, if a million is not a lot of money, and let's say a 10 million revenue would be a lot of money, then you can see how they're going to play the game at a slightly bigger level in terms of their thinking, their expectations, and also in terms of their performance. So just check in with yourself. What's a lot of money to you? What's a reasonable amount of money to you? What's a not a lot of money to you? You see, if you think 100 grand is not a lot of money and a million is a decent amount of money and 10 million is a lot of money, you can see the scale that you are playing out in terms of your mindset and your psychology. And then you need to work out is, am I in the right place for what it is that I'm trying to achieve in my business. If you're someone that sits there and says, I don't want to be too successful, I don't want to be too rich. I'm telling you now, I've never found anybody that says, I don't want too much money that has just enough money, but not too much money. In other words, let's say, for example, too much money is a million pound income per year. I don't know anyone that has that mindset that ends up with 950 grand or 999 grand income a year. What happens when you say, I don't want too much money is actually nine times out of 10, you'll go so far the other way that you barely have enough money or you don't have enough money. So just be mindful of how you think about money and business. It's such an important part of creating the business and the success that you want, but also about creating the, the lifestyle that you want. You know, if you've got negative issues around money inside yourself in terms of your mindset, your perceptions around money, then ultimately you're going to perform in a certain way in alignment with those perceptions and that mindset and that psychology. And therefore, you're potentially going to be building stress and tension into your business and therefore into your life. And the knock on to that into your personal life, the knock on to that to your own health is unbelievable on top of obviously the negative impact that's going to have on your business itself. The number of marriages and relationships that I see in entrepreneurs where money becomes such a major part in the breakdown of those relationships is incredible. The stress it brings on, on both parties, the pressure it brings into that relationship. So I'm telling you now, even if you don't think you want to be rich and successful, be rich and successful for no other reason than it removes a lot of the stress and the pressures and the anxieties that can have real knock-on effects to many areas of life. Relationships, marriages, your ability to be a well-rounded parent, your ability to you know live long and prosper and be healthy. I'm saying you now, all those things are negatively impact if you have money worries. I'm not saying there aren't other stresses in business. Of course there are. Remove the money worries if for no other reason than to remove that part of the stress, the anxiety, etc., that may otherwise exist in the business, in you and in all areas of your life. So mindset, I said before, 70 to 80% of everything is around the mindset. So unsurprisingly, we spent probably about 70% of this podcast talking about mindset. I can't stress it enough. Get the mindset right first. Now, once that's in place, you are no longer the limiting factor in your business. You then need to start looking at other aspects, other financial aspects of that business. The next one I want to look at is the model. So if I give you a crap model or if you've created a crap business model for yourself, a model that let's say it maxes out at 25,000 or something, maybe 50,000, you know, depending on where your money mindset is, maybe even a crap model to you would be one that maxes out at 100 or quarter of a million. You have that model in place and the best mindset in the world, the, the highest performing business owners and entrepreneurs, they'll wring the last ounce 
of potential out of that business model, but they can't make the business model deliver more than the business model can deliver. So if your business model is, you know, a hundred grand and that's the most it can deliver, if you run, you know, your business optimally, and for that you need to be running yourself optimally, then you may get a hundred grand. You may get 95 grand, maybe 90 grand out of that business model, but you can't get 150 out of it because it doesn't exist. So once our mindset's in the right place, our performance is in the right place, our focus is in the right place, then we have to start looking at the business model and breaking that business model down and making sure that fundamentally that this business model that I'm operating, the one that I'm building and working, is the one that's going to give me what I need to get out of it or what I want to get out of it. And is it going to deliver what the business itself needs out of it in order to fulfill the goals and the ambitions that you have for your business. So I've developed a whole kind of questionnaire on this, which is, is your business six figure ready? And it's just a set of questions to really look at your business model. It looks at your hourly rate. It looks at, you know, how many hours you get to deliver in your business. It's far from being a precise, accurate calculator. However, what it does do is it gives you a real kind of finger in the air sense of whether or not your business is really built to deliver the success that you want to have. It's built around the concept of a hundred grand. So if you listen to any of my podcasts in the past, I talk about the six figure fast track. The six figure fast track is a webinar. It's a masterclass. It's also a much bigger content piece that I deliver sometimes in whole day seminars. It's also the title and the content of a book that I'm in the process of writing a program that I'm in the process of creating. However, the most accessible form for you guys to get access to that content is through the Masterclass webinar. It's about 90 minutes. We look at your six-figure mindset. We look at your six-figure model. And we look at your six-figure methodologies. And those are day-to-day activities you need to have in place in order to take your business to 100 grand or more in revenue in the aim 12 months or less. You can get that. I'll put it out there right now. I'll drop the link in the descriptions anyway, but it's biggerbrighterbolder.co.uk forward slash fast track. The link I'll put in the description. You can go and do that literally straight away. But for the purpose of what we're talking about here, um, this other questionnaire that I've created really helps you break down and work through whether or not you are currently able to achieve six figures in your business, but also are you, you know, in terms of your 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 operational side of you as the entrepreneur, are you doing what you need to do in order to hit that six figure mark? And uh, and again, the aim is always saying, right, can you do it in the next 12 months? That's the big challenge. That's why I challenge all my success group plus members on is sitting there saying, right, you know, 30, 40, 50 K, you want to hit a hundred grand in 12 months or less. Let's look at what needs to be in place. And we look at lots of things, not just money. We look at all aspects of uh, delivery, business modeling, and obviously a lot of stuff around personal performance and mindset. So I'm also going to drop that other resource in there. And it's uh, two worksheets you can go through. One is, is your business built for six figures, 100K? And the other one is, are you built for six figures, 100K? Just two worksheets. You download those. And again, you fill them out. It just gives you a rough idea of whether or not you and your business are in a good place to achieve that 100K mark. If you're already doing over 100 grand, you'll still get some great insight from those two sheets. You just have to mentally adapt them more for where you are currently in your business. But if you really are serious about massive growth in your business and you're already doing over 100,000 turnover, then why not drop us a line and talk to us about potentially joining us at one of our Extreme Growth Masterminds where we've taken people you know, from 150 grand to 350 to 750 uh, to 1.5 million, 2.2 million, and onwards and upwards. And uh, this is consecutive years, by the way. And it's not just turnover and revenue. Um, the, one of the guys that went from 350 to 750, obviously more than doubled his turnover, but he actually quadrupled his profits in the same year. So if you're really serious about business growth, then drop us a line and we can talk to you about how maybe Extreme Growth Mastermind can get you where you want to get to. If you haven't yet hit 100K, we've got a lot of things in place to help you do that as well. But maybe go and download those worksheets, go and check out the Six Figure Fast Track and see where your gaps are and see what you need to put in place where the limitations are in you and in your business that are holding you back. Definitely go and do those things, take some action and start to really move your business forward. When we're looking at the business model, 
And specifically what we're looking at is in the money model, what we're really looking at here is really simply is if your business was running at maximum capacity, you were delivering all the service you could deliver, the product you could deliver without changing the business model, without expanding it, without hiring people, without changing your pricing strategy or pricing structures or anything like that, would your business achieve what it is that you want to achieve? So if you're charging 25 pounds an hour, and you can deliver four hours a day because in between that, you have to travel in between clients, for example, then the most you can ever earn is a hundred pound a day. Does this make sense? And even if you could work seven days a week, that's only going to equate to 700 pound a week. That's where your model is going to max out. If, for example, you could then also say, well, no, I could probably pick one up in the evenings, and but I can't do Sundays. You say, right, so now you're looking at a maximum of £125 per day for five days, you're looking at £625 a week. And then you might even go as far as saying, right, but also, you know, I can't work uh, Christmas holidays because your clients physically don't want you there. And also maybe you can't do a couple of weeks of summer because you take two weeks holiday, whatever it might be. And you can start to look at, even if you were as successful as you could possibly be given your money model right now in your business, you would never be particularly financially successful. It's impossible. Does this make sense? So then you start looking at things like, well, if I doubled my prices, so if I went to £50 per hour and still did the five sessions per day, well, now I'm looking at £250 a day, five days a week. Now I'm looking at £1,250. That looks a lot healthier but of course, if your money mindset's not in the right place, guess what's going to happen? Your money mindset's going to turn around and say, oh no, we're not worth £50. My clients won't spend £50. I'm more expensive than other, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm not saying that all those things are things you ignore. They're definitely things you need to solve. That's part of the business model. When you look at your business model, you're looking at who are you selling to, how are you selling to them, uh, with your positioning. You start looking at your offering, your return of investments, your marketing, how you sell the product. So of course, I'm not saying just ignore the fact that maybe you're twice as expensive as everyone else in your area doing what you're doing and therefore just to belligerently go ahead and just charge twice as much, you know, overnight. Of course, you know, you can't ignore necessarily these things, but you don't want you to be the thing that gets in the way. I see a lot of business owners say, oh no, I can't double my prices. And it's a big thing I do. I do a lot of talks on this. I do a lot of content on this, doubling your prices. And the first thing that people say is I can't. And the moment you say you can't, it's your money mindset that's getting in the way. Once you say, okay, how, right? Now we're into opportunity. And we look at how do we price your products differently? And of course, once we price your products differently, better for you, we then need to have to work out how do we make that work from your client's perspective in your business as a whole's perspective, right? How do we market? How do we position? How do we package? How do we deliver differently? Does this make sense? So the easiest thing you do is say, right, I'm not making enough money or my business model caps out too soon. I double my prices. I've literally doubled the capacity that I have to make money in my business. You then might turn around and say something on the lines of, well, okay, but what if I also, instead of delivered, you know, like these five hours a day where I'm doing this one hour traveling average between clients, what if I got my clients to come to me? So instead of just doing the five hours a day, I could do maybe six hours a day and not have to do the evening. So now I'm making more money per day and creating a better quality of life for myself. Does this make sense? And you start to adapt and you start to evolve your business model and your financial model. Now, you know, I'm, I'm touching on much bigger aspects here than just the money model, but you understand what I'm saying here, okay? When we're talking about your money model, it's really simple. It's how much do you get paid for one unit of something that you deliver and what's the maximum number of units you get to deliver or can deliver right now? That tells you where your business maxes out. To fix that, you say, right, raise your prices, you deliver slightly differently, you target a different customer base, you position your product slightly differently, maybe improve your product slightly, maybe the product's good enough, but the customer experience needs to be improved. If you go and buy a car from Bentley, for example, it's not just stuck out the front of a forecourt. The car itself might be worth 150 grand or 200 grand or whatever, but the whole experience around it creates that whole financial uh, validity in the product that you're purchasing. It's like going to you know, a five-star hotel. Yeah, the room's great, the room's awesome, but it's also the whole experience you get. It's the concierge, it's the 
the car park. It's, you know, how you deliver. I don't know, they take your keys off it and they valet park your car and then you show up and you've already checked in because they put a tag on your luggage that let them know that you were coming in and they greet you by name and they show you to your room or whatever it might be. They put champagne, all these little touches, right, that fundamentally prop up the pricing that you're asking for. Big picture stuff, I get it, right? When we're looking purely in financial terms, the question is really simple, is where does your model max out financially? Are you happy with that? Whether that's 25 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, whether it's a million, 10 million, 100 million, a billion, are you happy with that? If not, you need to do some work around the money modeling. The best mindset in the world will bring the last ounce of potential out of a business model, but it can't get more out of it than is in it, okay? You can't make more than you can make. If it's 100 grand in the model, you can get 100 grand. Realistically, you'll never get 100 grand, but you'll get close to 100 grand maybe, even if you've got an amazing mindset, but you'll never get 150. It's impossible to do so. So once we've got a mindset in the right place, once we've got our model in the right place, then it's about methodology. Methodology is the day-to-day activity that you do And we're specifically talking here around money. So we talk about the money mindset and people that put, you know, customer experience first and customer service first. They'll have some great methodologies around that. However, all those methodologies will probably drown and suffocate any methodologies you have around making money. So you need to make sure that you prioritize those methodologies that make money. So the simplest thing we're talking about here is sales. You prioritize sales. Are you making sure that every single day in business that you are focused on sales? Now, that could be closing deals, but it could also be in generating leads. It could be in terms of Uh, upselling current clients or offering different products to your current clients, re-engaging past clients, developing partnerships with people that have your client base, joint venture partnerships. There's a whole lot of things that come under that kind of sales banner, but fundamentally, are you prioritizing sales in your business? If you're like most small businesses, you're not. You know, you're prioritizing customer services, you're prioritizing delivery, you're prioritizing all these things. Sometimes I see businesses uh, prioritizing marketing, but not prioritizing sales. Well, marketing without sales is, is pointless, right? Even if marketing works, you'll create these leads, but you won't be closing those leads. So you want to make sure that your day-to-day methodologies in your business, of course, they deliver great service and great products, but actually you want to start bringing to the surface the day-to-day methodologies. I'm just talking about day-to-day activities that fundamentally make you make money, make money for your business. So there are the three things I want you to think about this week. Have a little look. Number one, check out yourself. Are you the limiting factor in your business? If not, number two, is the business model the limiting factor in your business? If not, is the day-to-day activity the limiting factor in your business? When you get your money mindset right, your money modeling right, and you get your money methodology, your money activity right, you will be more successful. Instantly, of course not. Will you get everything right straight off the bat? Of course not. But it's about getting those things right, and it's like a puzzle that you want to be working on throughout your entrepreneurial journey to get these things as right as you possibly can. Because if you get the right things in the right place at the right time in your business, you will be successful. Okay, there you go. Think about money, make money a priority, get your money right in your business, and then you can make some money. And then guess what? Even if money's not important to you, it is to your business, you get to do more of what it is that you set your business up for. By default, you'll also get a better quality of life for yourself and all those people that you care about around yourself. As already mentioned on this episode, there is the six-figure fast track waiting for you right now. Biggerbrightbolder.co.uk forward slash fast track. Get yourself onto Six Figure Fast Track. We go into some of the stuff we've talked about here today, but we go into a lot more detail. And I do challenge you to do some work and some exercises to really uh, capitalize on the opportunities that you have in your business. If you are already doing 100K, then talk to us about our Extreme Growth Mastermind. I'm also going to put those other two resources, which is Are You Six Figure Ready? Is Your Business Six Figure Ready? I'm going to get those in there as well for you. I'm here to support you, to help you be as successful as you possibly can. Thank you, as always, for letting me into your life, letting me into your business. I always appreciate your ears and your minds and your time. And you know what? Together, we can make it happen. I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, as always, be successful. Leveling up. Extreme business growth through raising your game. 
when what was once extraordinary becomes ordinary, you know you've levelled up 